Hi guys, as some of you know, um, I like to play a lot of old Windows and DOS games, mainly from around the late 80s to the mid 90s. Uh, some of my favourites include SimCity, Civilization 2, for example. I thought in this video I'd show you uh, what machine I used to play these on. Um, rather than use like a Raspberry Pi or anything uh, modern or emulation, I prefer you know the real deal, something from from the time of the games, and uh, for that. It's the Fujitsu Lifebook E360 that I use. Um, manufactured in 1998. Its uh, operating system is Windows 98 Special Edition. My favourite version of Windows, I must add. It's always served me really well. I thought I'd uh, use this opportunity to uh, show you around the laptop in terms of the hardware specification, uh, how it runs, what I've got saved on there, uh, a guide to all the drives, the uh, serial ports, etc. Right then, let's take a look. Okay, so we'll start with the front of the machine and here you can see on the uh, bottom right, we've got the uh, CD-ROM drive, uh, more on that later. And to its left is the, in the middle of the machine, is the battery. Okay, now what's interesting about the battery is, if I show you here, it simply slides out like this. So here's the battery. And this is the uh, floppy disk drive, as you can see both identical in size and shape. Now what you can do if you're willing to uh, use the laptop uh, plugged in at all times is the battery and the floppy disk drive are interchangeable. So I can just uh, stick the drive in there and we can have CD-ROM and flop three and a quarter inch floppy uh, together at once, provided the laptop's plugged in, as I said. In terms of the floppy, if we don't want to be plugged in, slip the battery back in and then the uh, floppy drive here, if I can show you, connects to this adapter, that way around. Uh, there we go, and that becomes an external floppy, and it just clips in there. Here's the, uh, a better view of the adapter, I just realised it. Didn't quite get the best view on it earlier. There we are. Okay, so moving on to the uh, laptop's right hand side, We've got the volume control and the usual ports for um, headphones, microphones, etc. We've then got uh, one USB port, that's any USB port on the machine. Um, I guess USB technology was pretty new back then. The power switch, fan, and here's where we plug. It in. And now coming around the back of the machine, this little door slides open nicely and reveals a port for the mouse and a print cable, I guess. Close that. Nice dark bit here. The uh, laptop's equipped with infrared technology. That's what you see there. Now onto the final side, we've got the uh, floppy port, as I've already mentioned. And here's where the uh, networking comes into play. This is the original cable, as you can see for a phone line, this was, when this laptop was made there wasn't such a thing as wireless technology, so this was <clears throat> this connected into here and uh, allowed dial up internet, but uh, I recently found this on eBay, it only cost me £2.50, it's a 3Com uh, wireless network card, here we go, simply slots into here like this, and we have wireless. Now I have, uh, I have managed to connect laptop to my wireless broadband. It, it took me weeks actually, it took a lot of configuration through the uh, the router, uh, you know, I had to switch channels and all sorts of things, so it's probably not worth me showing you now, it'll take, it'll probably take hours to remember how I even did it, but you must believe me, it does work. We can get broadband internet with Windows 98. I've actually just found the, uh, the original network card that this uh, machine came with, so I'll just quickly show you that. It's a lot. It's a lot more pleasing on the eye than the wireless one. It doesn't stick out. It's how you know how it was intended for dial-up internet back then. Just press this button here, get it out. This is, this is what the machine came with. You know, it served me well back in the late 90s. 
someone on my uh, Twitter uh, saw my laptop and described it as an absolute weapon. So <laughs> I thought for context I'd show you um, in the size of my modern uh, Windows 10 work laptop uh, compared to the laptop we're talking about. You can see the difference in thickness between the two. Okay, so I thought I'd show you the boot up process. Obviously, I won't show you it all in real time because it'll be a bit boring, but I'll, uh, I'll let you know how long the boot up time is once it's fully started up. So here we go, flick the switch on the right hand side, and on we come. Okay, so here we are on the desktop. As I said, we're running Windows 98. Uh, I've got Microsoft Plus installed too. I've got a fair amount of uh, games and software. I'm running uh, Office 97. It's actually my favorite version of Office. Uh, reasonably simple, but effective. Plenty of games on here. I'll zoom in shortly, but there's all sorts on here. Some of the Microsoft software packages, such as Photo Editor, I often use that. Microsoft Publisher, that really got me through school. DOS prompt, of course. We've got Internet Explorer. As I said, I'm not connected to the internet at the moment. I think it's Internet Explorer 5. Plenty of other good things. MSN Messenger, <laughs> used that a lot in the late 90s. Um, what else? Front Page Express. Helped me create many websites many years ago. Okay, so we'll move on to the spec of the laptop um, and we'll start with the hard drive, or should I say hard drives? Now there's two if you see here, the C and D. Um, you can see the uh, capacity and how much is used on the left. C, capacity is well, just under two gigabytes and it's exactly the same for D. Which is strange, I'm not sure why there's two hard drives because, uh, you know, we got this laptop brand new and uh, I've never done a, a partition of the original drive. So why on earth there's two when it could just be a single drive of four gigabytes? I'm not sure. Perhaps it was limitations at the time. I really don't know. Anyway, moving on. Show you some other aspects of the hardware and system device manager. I hope you can see this. So the CD-ROM drive, it's a Machita Ujda 150. I hope I've said that correctly. It's a it's a 24 speed CD-ROM drive. Uh, doesn't have rewritable uh, capability. And although I say 24 speed, it, it does struggle at times with you know with games that have the you know speech elements. It, there is a bit of a lag time there. So whether or not it's underperforming a bit, I'm not sure. As for the sound, it's this uh, ES1879. Now that's actually a uh, Sound Blaster Pro and Sound Blaster 16 um, compatible or equivalent. So when I'm installing a game, uh, the I tend to go with Sound Blaster Pro for the uh, the best performance, it works fine. In terms of the screen at the moment, I'm running in 16-bit uh, color, works fine. A lot of the games I have require two, 256 colors though, and I do have to, you know, change, change the display settings and restart in order to play them effectively. Uh, what else can I tell you? I guess RAM, RAM's obviously a key one. It's uh, 48 megabytes of SD RAM. I've never felt the need to uh, upgrade that because all the games you know I play you know kind of pre-1997 and uh, you know minimum requirements back then were probably 16 megabytes so never been an issue with speed of game. Now the processor here is a Intel Pentium 2 233 megahertz which is again it's more than adequate for what I use the machine for. Just to give you an example of the sound quality, I've got a WAV file here from uh, Microsoft Golf 3.0. I'll give you a quick play.
yeah, it's not bad. I was quite surprised that, you know, I've got a, a modern day uh, 30 gigabyte memory stick here. I put it in and unexpectedly, uh, you know, without me having to do anything, it's, uh, it's recognized it, all works fine. So, you know, if I'm ever short of space, uh, I can always be safe in the knowledge that I could put uh, put things on the memory stick rather than try and fiddle around with upgrading. Now here we've got the, the power meter. I mean, I must say the battery isn't the best after all these years. Um, I've had this one plugged for about 20 minutes and I'm down to 64%. On a good day, you know, with me actively using it, I can probably get about an hour and an hour and a half of, uh, of play time on here without the need to plug in, which I guess isn't too bad. So in terms of the uh, the two hard drives, I use the C for well, obviously all the Windows files and program files, and then any software I get that's not a game, basically, you know, Encarta I've got on here, the print shop, etc. And then on the other hand, the D drive, these are the games I've got saved on here. Quite a few, and I'm still only using half of the hard drive. Got a lot of the sim games, City, City 2000, Farm, Health, Isle, <laughs> Refinery. The two Simon the Sorcerers, I'm not sure why there's a third there. Um, some Simpsons games, uh, Championship Manager 3, Caesar 2. Well, you can see there what I've got at the moment. I'll probably rotate them when, once I've finished some of these. I'll, uh, I like to keep a bit of space on the hard drives. Now I'll quickly sh show you a game on here. Um, SimCity 2000, I haven't got a CD in at the moment, but can still play without the, the movie. Yep, sounds good. Looks good. Okay, I'll just show you DOS quickly. I'll restart in DOS mode. It's not always the fastest process, so I might have to speed up this section. Quicker than usual. All good. No problems here. So as ever, thanks for watching. I hope you found a, this a little bit interesting and enjoyable, the guide to the Fujitsu Lifebook E360. Um, good luck if you ever want to find one yourself. I've often looked on eBay to see if anyone else sells them, but nah. I think uh, the rest of these in the wild are long gone, sadly. But anyway, take care. Bye-bye.